Hey guys, uh, today I'm doing a, a really cool haircut on Lauren. Um, you guys have sent me many emails in regards to a hair that's trending really big at the moment. That's called a shag. It's a, a it's an increased laid haircut. It has a few different names, but I guess the purpose of a shag is to transition away from um, the haircuts we've been doing for quite a while that are quite full and, and, and minimalist in terms of the layering. And doing this haircut is actually the opposite. It's about loosening it up and about having some movement and some texture in the hair. So um, Lauren's obviously going to have a long version today. We'll take a little bit off the length, but not too much. So I'll show you a long version and then you're also going to get to see a shorter version. So we're going to get started. Yeah, it's gonna look great. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, it's just a mess. It needed it so bad. Have you had a haircut since we did it last? Don't hurt me. You haven't, no. Since Alex did it, it's a testament to, to how good he did it. Exactly. And that it lasted that long. Exactly. And this is just, I think, fade from like um, when she dyed it as yep. well. Um, I think they actually are going to need a, a balayage model for next Tuesday morning. Cool. So if you're free, yeah, I'll come. 100%. Um, I'll just um, tell them that you are available, and um, we can go from there. Yeah. Done. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is um, just going to choose our, our length in the baseline. Some of you may agree or disagree with the way I section this out. One of the things I say a lot is sometimes um, doing lots of sections can make us more accurate with what we do. I also believe it can make you less accurate or inaccurate. So um, I would always say sections should be determined by um, the density of the hair and what you're actually trying to do on the baseline rather than starting at the bottom taking one centimeter sections and having hardly any hair in your section to cut so what i'm doing with lauren is no different i think uh working neat is always very important um, but at the same time um, everything that you see, everything that I do, is exactly how I would work in the salon. Um, this is working commercially. So, we have obviously time restrictions. I get 45 minutes to do a lady's haircut. So I need to make sure that I can work in that amount of time. down a little bit longer. Thank you, Tom. Too far. Thank you.
Alright, so now with the baseline done, um, for this particular cut I decided to square it off on the shoulders rather than over direct it all to the back like you would if it was a traditional one length haircut. And we're actually going to not cut the perimeter around the face just yet. Um, we're going to start with the top. Right, so the way I determine my length with this is really um, about using, um, I guess, your skill as a hair cutter to determine, you know, what sort of balance you want. If you want something that's quite alternative and quite short, then you absolutely can do that. You would then need to think about somewhere around the occipital bone, transitioning with a disconnection. The length that I'm going to do on, on, on Lauren is completely commercial, so this is a commercial balance which I, when I say it's a commercial balance, I like it to be sort of mainstream fashion. So I don't want to push it to being alternative, but at the same time, I don't want it to be conservative and boring. So we're going to do somewhere in between. I'm going to work with a length that'll probably sit around about her chin in the front and retain all this length down here. And we're going to do that by creating our, our shape in the top. So I'll show you how I do this. So this is the beginning of the interior shape or the layering. I take quite a generous section when I do this. You guys might not be able to see, but I've actually got Lauren turned sideways into the mirror because I want to be able to see the length. Another good thing is to maybe hold it where you're hoping to do it, grabbing the ends and seeing what impact that's going to have. So that's going to obviously remove a fair bit of weight out of the ends, which is what we want because we want it to be loose. So I'm going to slightly over direct this retaining length to the back um, again when you're doing this you can choose any shape you want so here goes nothing Because I want to retain as much length as possible and as much weight as possible on the ends, I need to over direct it back towards the middle. So essentially, this is increased layering. And we keep doing this until we run out of hair. Same now on the other side. actually um, it's quite um even uh, cutting it it's quite it's quite ballsy because you you um you're actually cutting quite a substantial amount of weight 
out of the interior. Let me just spin you around so you can see what I did because for my last section, I'm actually going to grab it all at once, making sure it's straight in line with the bridge of the nose. Don't chase the hair that falls out. It's falling out because it's already short enough. And what I'm going to do, I don't normally do a lot of texturizing when the hair is wet. I'm actually going to just break this line up a little bit and remove a tiny little bit of weight. You can see, even though we did it quite short, we retained all the length here. And by shaping it like this, you actually do layer it around the face a little bit. And you're starting to create that nice softness, quite bold. Retain all that length. You can see our interior shape started to form. Now it's time to transition into the back. want to do the back, I actually do this in two sections. We're going to take a section just below the crest line, we're going to comb this forward, leave the back left out. This again is a continuation on. From the front section. <laughs> so obviously we've got our marker set from the front. Again, I like to grab the entire section. I guess it makes it bigger for us with large hands, but you could split it up into two, like this, if you wanted to. Or if it was easier to control, always checking you bring it back to the middle. We just want to really make sure that we're keeping that nice, slight diagonal forward design line for our shape. Like I did in the first section, I like to take this entire top section. So I'll spin around this way so we can see a bit better. And you cut it all at once. Check it all at once. Yeah, I'll just 
over direct it a little bit too much so I'm going to make that little adjustment and again while I've got it there just softly point cut those ends Now it's time to transition to the back. Just section these front pieces out, we're done with those. We'll come back to that because what we're going to find is through this section here we're going to have to need to flatten it out a little bit so you get that that the, the the shape and the hair stacks away so we will have to address this sort of mid third again but now it's time to work in the back so the way i found the the back is um I've, I've, i can cut it a few different ways for this particular example we're going to use a technique i learned at tony and guy and it was called square layering so essentially taking a rectangle shape like this as our guide, we're going to steal a little bit of that hair through the top here as our, our length guide and we're going to work all this to that point. So again we're going to do increased layering but instead of doing um, vertical sections we're going to do horizontal sectioning. And it's as simple as bringing this whole middle section to that point until you run out of hair. It's just really important that you project this at 180 degrees because if you don't, you're going to end up with a big, and you're going to end up with a weight line anyway, but you'll end up with a big weight line here if you don't bring this to a true 180 degrees. So be sure to over direct it enough. These ends are going to love hitting the floor, Lauren. I know, I'm so excited. This is a great haircut um, to give to your client as a change. It doesn't compromise the length of the hair. As I said in my intro, um, I know I've been doing a lot of it. Um, we've been working with really strong blunt perimeters and blunt, blunt perimeters were really on trend for a long time and minimal layering. So instead of traditionally layering the hair, we're actually going through and point cutting the hair. So um, this is a great change to give to your client. It's not going to disrupt the length too much, although you might want to um, have a conversation about how it is going to make the ends loose and light. And if they do like a little bit of fullness in the ends, then you essentially can adjust um, the length that you cut. So if you wanted someone who wanted a really super shag, you could actually be bold and cut it to there and be really super aggressive with it. And it's going to be super light. Um, as I said before, I'm going to do something that um, is commercially on trend at the moment and it is introducing short lays into the hair but it's not pushing pushing our boundaries as such um, but again this technique can be used to push boundaries it's just you need to adjust the length that you choose so you could quite easily cut this to there no problem but then you obviously would take a lot of the weight out of the ends so once you've done that middle section I usually find that these side these side sections are quite light so again because I need to work commercially I take a little bit of extra time and I comb this all up and I cut this all at once just making sure we don't steal that hair from that front section I want to make sure that we don't combing it in we're combing it horizontally it's not wrong it's just going to give you a different shape
make half of this now. Leave it here. Just comb this out of the way so we don't get all in a mess. And we're going to repeat on this side. I'll spin Lauren around so you can see. Nice sharp scissors, if I was working on hair that was really thick, um, I would obviously be taking multiple sections because um, you're going to get really inaccurate cutting lines if you try and cut thick hair all at once like that. So we'll comb this down, we're going to take a look, then we're going to transition connecting our um, front to our back, then we're going to work on shaping it around the front, we're going to give Lauren some really nice banks to frame her lips and her jaw and then we're going to dry it all off and then we're going to do some texturizing so the layering technique that you just I just displayed the horizontal um, increase layering is really for layering in this part of the hair so now what I'm going to do we're going to actually over direct this to create a little bit of shortness on top and then we're going to connect the front um, to the back. So this time we're going to go in with uh, vertical sections and we're really going to exaggerate this and over direct it a lot. And you'll see the shape that I've created with the horizontal layering, you can see that there. But all we're going to do now is really over direct this and we're going to use the shortest point here and I'm going to connect that this way you can see and again this can be adapted you can push the limits you can make the hair shorter on top obviously that's the personalization of being a hairdresser and that's what makes what we do so special is because we all do things differently just make sure you don't cut into that guideline as you go and ruin that shape that you've just spent that time creating don't go chasing hair it's not there again we're increasing this all back to the center and the reason why we do that is because I'm yet to meet someone who has hair growing out of the side of their neck and if you don't over direct it you're going to get a hole because there's no hair here so it's really important that you bring this back to the center One, um, one important point to mention is that still at this point I've not removed any additional length in terms of the perimeter length that I set like the, the, the length that I set when I cut the base hasn't changed so a lot of times you're doing this on your clients and they're freaking out they're like man I see a lot of hair coming off it's really important to reassure them that the length has not changed and if you're following the the sectioning and the guideline correctly um, and you're not cutting into those ends that will absolutely be the truth you will not change the length again one thing I like to do and it's easy for us with big hands is I like to bring it all to the center and get this combed up really nice and neat and we just want to check and we want to get that really super sharp first I'm combing it straight up like I was when I did the horizontal sectioning into the middle 
into the middle, working up, making sure my comb is in line with that center parting that I set and any little bits that you may have missed. It's really quite simple to clean them up and you end up with a really, really accurate shape. And again, we just give that a gentle little, little breaking up point cut. Only go about two centimeters in because we can do some more texturizing later. All right, let's have a look at that shape. So you can see you've got beautiful short layers. Obviously, when we texturize that, that's going to get a tiny little bit shorter. Um, I think this is a really, really balanced length. I don't think it's too out there. And again, all that length is all there. And although it has softened the ends a little bit, I wouldn't say that it was super thin on those ends by any means. That is still got really good structure in the ends, but again, this is about being light and loose. I think that's what it is. So far, so good. Look at those little curls in the front. They're crazy. Go down. All right. Let's connect that front to the back. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is obviously we'll do, do a quick recap. We did um, increase layering with diagonal back section, and that's mainly, if you can see this section here, it almost, it almost looks like as you work back, you're actually cutting into this section and redoing the shape you are. Because this front section is all about creating the shape in this third year. Then we went through and we connected it here, which is about connecting the sides. And then we did horizontal in the back, we brought that up, and then we've obviously now taken that little uh, corner off because we want it to be slightly shorter because the horizontal sectioning and that box layering is just for this middle third to shape this middle third here. It doesn't, it doesn't make it short enough up here for it to be as light and as loose as it needs to be. So what we need to do now is obviously we've changed the length of this from when we cut this and this. So now we're gonna bring all this back and, and blend it in. You're probably thinking to yourself, well, why didn't I cut it that way to begin with? Um, for me, um, I never cut anything off until I know 100% I don't need it. So for me, this is like a process of working it section by section into the shape I need rather than just going, um, okay, well, I want this about there and there and I'm just gonna go bang straight to start with. It's about a process of working it back so that I work accurately and intelligently because I have uh, sometimes um, taken it in one big section and it hasn't worked out as well as I would have liked. So once bitten, twice shy, I guess you could say. Actually, I'll bring this around this way so you can see this angle. So again, bringing it back into the side. And what's really important is that we shift this back to the same angle. So you're gonna see quite a fair bit of hair we've got to cut off here, and there it is, see? This is where we flatten it out. This is called shift distribution. There it is there, see it? Same on the other side. Really important again, there's no hair growing out of here, out of the cheeks, out of the jaw. You must over direct this back, otherwise you're gonna get big holes on the chest and that's not nice. Shifting in towards the center, completely over directing Nice, even distribution. Don't bunch the hair up for your fingers. Make sure it's a nice, even plane. You don't want to bunch it up like this and try and cut it. You want to keep it spread evenly throughout the comb. You're going to get more accurate distribution that way. Done. Won't be very much to cut in this last front section on the left-hand side. here there at once I'm just going this way there it is there don't be scared bring in the alternate side this time
This is an amazing product. I use it in every single haircut I do. Buy a large hydrosaur spray. Cannot cut without it. Um, what's equally as good is also the buy a large or the matrix cutting oil, which is also good. I've been using this well before the cutting oil came out, so I guess uh, the reason why I like to use a hydrosaur spray is because I find that the way it saturates the hair also helps me when I blow dry it. So I guess it, um, you, it's almost like prepping the hair for the, for the blow dry as well as being able to get the, um, the comb through the hair to, to cut it really neatly and accurately. Okay, the hardest bit. This is where I like to bring the entire haircut into that one point. We'll see how we go. Lauren's got quite a lot of hair, so we'll see if we can can get it all in one go. If I can't, I usually use do sorry, I usually use a symmetrical center party and I do one side at a time. I'm gonna try and do the whole lot in one hit here. You can see I'm gradually combing it up into the projection or the angle and the projection that I'm going to need. And then Gotcha. It's pretty good. From the wide to the fine side of the comb now, and we just, you can see these little, little bits that we just need to nick off. And again, don't worry about those little bits that are falling out in the front. They've obviously fallen out because they're too short. They don't reach, they don't need to. Just going to give this a really gentle point cut just so during my drying process now before I do my texturizing it's just a little bit easier to dry it doesn't have those bulky cutting lines and weight lines because um, we're going to um, going to take retexturize it here anyway so let's have a look at the back so we've done head back for me gorgeous The beautiful thing I like about the beautiful thing I like about um, the way that I do this, and, I'm, and I've seen some amazing hair cutters do it differently, and it's equally as good. The thing that I like about this is it, it, it literally has a beautiful even stacking. So even though I have gently point cut um, wet, I think it's fair to say that there's hardly any weight lines in there at all. So. Yeah, that's why I like to do it that way. So last bit is the shaping in the front. You guys have all seen me do this before, but today I'm gonna to do it a completely different way. Because one thing that I haven't shown you guys is again, uh, projection and distribution can completely change the way that it sits around the front. So what we wanna do is we wanna be sure that we maintain, we don't wanna have strength and, and the solidity around the front where it's really, really solid when everything else is loose and textured and gentle. So how I would normally do the front would generally be, and you guys have seen, heads up at new natural fall, and I usually project it just below 90 degrees, which makes it graduation. For this particular haircut, I'm actually gonna project it above 90 degrees because I want it to be soft. So I'll turn it on the side so you can actually see the angle of projection, and then I'll turn it back. Not enough section, not enough hair in that little section, so I've taken a bit more. Just want to make sure that there's enough hair in here so I can see. And essentially what we want to do is we want to blend this into here. So we're just really working on taking this out. So what I'm going to do this time, we're actually going to project it well above 90 degrees. That's probably about 120 degrees. Over directing it to retain the length. There's that little spot that I was working as a guide that I pointed out, that little hole there. That came from the shape that we created around the front. What that allows to do, like you guys would know, the closer you go to zero on cut, the more solid it becomes. The further you project it away, the softer it falls. So that's why we do it that way. So you can see that the texture there is very similar and it all blends in there nicely.
this will be your lucky last and then it's time to dry it off just that little corner on the end there we're done So um, obviously um, I'm going to re-wet it down again with this amazing product, Hydrosource Spray. Um, and my smoothing product today is going to be Smooth Setter. Um, I'm not going to style it smooth, but because as I mentioned to you guys, I still need to do a little bit of dry cutting. Obviously um, it would be an inaccurate way of doing it, it's not wrong, but for me it's inaccurate to style the hair in a messy sort of textured look and then try and cut because I like to have all the hair silky and smooth so I can see where my weight lines is so I can see what I need to change then I'm going to use the uh, mess maker and the high riser to style it so smooth setter first I need to get myself a blow dryer because I don't have one cool huh? Mm -hmm. I like it like that. I just like it textured and so hopefully when Lauren wears it she gets some um, sea salt mess maker spray. We spray that in especially now summer's on, on the way, spring's here in, in Australia. Um, it's really nice to have um, the summer looks and in Australia we like that beachy tasseled soft loose hair um, and that's exactly what you'll get with mess maker. Um, the only thing I would recommend is that you use before you use mess maker, and I'll grab some because I know I've got some, is a little bit of gloss booster. And the reason why I've used a gloss booster as well um, before I dry it um, is because Lauren has um, some um, balayage that we've done, what, eight months ago now? It was a long time, yeah. Um, obviously, um, the sea, the sea uh, spray, that, sorry, I keep getting the name wrong, it's actually mess maker, but it's called a salt infused spray. Mm -hmm. Um, that's going to make the hair quite sort of textured and almost dry feeling and the, and the gloss booster is going to um, give a little bit of you know softening and, and gloss in there so it doesn't look too raw I guess you could say. I like it just like that. It looks cool. Fucking hot. I'll be it back. Cool. We'll get a hair dryer. Close, close, bro. So even when I, um, every blow dry I do, I use a paddle brush. I like a flat brush and pre-dry all the hair that I do. For me, it gives me a really, for me, it gives me a really good um, indication of how the hair's drying. Um, I think um, round, brush, well, round brush blow dries aren't irrelevant. They are still very relevant in styling. And it's um, something, it's a skill that's still very important, but I don't often see in magazines or anything that's trending that looks around like a round brush. So it's really important to understand that you should try and dry hair as as it's worn in, in mainstream fashion. You don't want to make it round and whatever. So the best way to, to um, for me as a hair cutter, always use a flat brush. And this is without doubt the best flat brush I've ever used. That's from Evie Professional. It is incredible. really working with molding the hair to the shape of the head smooth setter and hydrosol spray because there is so much moisture in those two products it does allow you to pre-dry the hair and still manipulate it at the end
It's rad, man. I love it. really does make it easy to straighten the hair. You can see Lauren's hair has got quite a bit of natural movement in it. And just a smooth setter and hydro saw spray, large diameter round brush. It's really easy just to get it super smooth without any effort at all. I'm not, I don't, I don't say I would never, but I very, very rarely doing any blow dry at all, section hair. I like to just work sections of hair um, without clips.
Oh yeah, of course. Of course it has to, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you guys have heard that or not, but Lauren made a really important comment. She said it looks really nice smooth as well. And I, and I said it has to because, um, you, as a, as, for me, I think that you should give people, your clients, um, that you should give them um, flexibility and versatility in how they style their hair. So, you know, yeah, sometimes they, they do want to wear it straight. And you can see we've got these beautiful seamless layers coming through there we could style. You know, coming into the back, very, very minimal in terms of texturizing needs to be done because I got my geometry right. My, my angles and my projection were correct. So you can have this super, you know, um, height and disconnection, but as soon as we comb it down, if Lauren wants to wear it flat, it all works through seamlessly. And the reason why, the reason why I like to cut hair this way is because for me as a hair cutter, I'd rather people be able to push boundaries and have um, bold and elaborate styling rather than bold and elaborate haircuts that then have, you know, a lot of difficulty with styling. So if we wanted to, you know, make Lauren's hair quite sort of extreme, we could use some um, the Matrix Height Riser in here. You know, we can you know, get it up quite big. You can see it's going to give a width in here. It's going to give disconnection through the side but because we got our angles right and projection right the minute that it the minute that you brush it smooth it all flows and works seamlessly so yeah all right a little bit of dry cutting actually don't need as much as I thought um, we're just a little bit of texturizing through the top and then I think we're done you like it yeah it looks really cool that's so nice yeah. Did you get the fucking love? It? She fucking loves it. It's so awesome. Yeah. So when I, I, I learned this um, technique from a, a very talented hairdresser who I'm also happy to say is a mate of mine. Um, and when we take um, diagonal sectioning like this through the top, and he told me that this this theory is based on engineering. And when I thought about it, he's exactly right because what we're doing is we're actually creating through sectioning and again through design and mathematics which is all mathematically based is a seamless blend without having to over texturize the hair so you can see that we've taken nice deep diagonal through here and we're just going to very gently point cut the top and you can see you can see just how thick it is and the disconnection that I've left there and it's still blended really, really well. So we're just going to very gently point cut this. And this little point to the middle where the back meets the front or where two techniques meet, you always get a point, which is why we have that in there. But points sometimes need to be there to give you structure and foundation. So I'm not going to cut it out. I'm merely going to soften it with some texturizing. until I can see that it's starting to look a little bit more dispersed. Yep, we're almost there. And when you let it go, beautiful blend. In actual fact, it probably looks like, you know, there's hardly any layering there at all until you, you really start to style it. Just check the front. I want to make sure that the front is an endy, which can sometimes happen. Um, I use an amazing pair of scissors made by Excellent Edges called Crocodile, 
And the reason why I use this is because um, I like to leave the ends around the face with some texture, but if open and closed enough, you actually can cut a blunt line. So it allows me flexibility. So again, when we cut this, we projected it well above 90 degrees. We're gonna project it just below 90 degrees and anywhere where I see these little end bits, I'm just gonna very gently polish the ends. Don't wanna cut the shape out. Yeah. Best to use a, a, long, a long comb for this. Same on the other side. Then we'll check the ends in the back. Again, just where it's looking a little bit light and a bit endy. Just take those off. Again, straight down the middle in the back. Bring the hair on both sides. Sorry if I seem a little bit distracted, but we're actually cutting Lauren's hair in the front window of our Lonsdale Street Salon and people are walking past looking in to see what's going on. So I keep looking up because people have pressed their faces against the window. That's really hot. That was so you can see, really nice, long. Um, some people um, would probably say this is a conservative version of the shag and I would agree. Um, I don't like the word conservative. I would say commercially versatile. So the styling's versatile, the, um, the length is versatile. So if, if Lauren wants to push boundaries a little bit, we can do that with styling, make the, the, the layers look a little bit more extreme. Let's just take another look at the back. Might just need to check those ends. I think we've still got quite a nice strong baseline there. Yep, it's quite good. Might be a bit, I need a little bit of an adjustment. Chin down a little bit for me. Thank you. I say to all the people who I teach, make sure the ends are nice and clean because it makes your haircut look really expensive and that's what people want. All right, so now we're gonna spray some mess maker in it. Head back. Well, I might wanna close your eyes, I might get a little bit of overspray. So we're gonna spray some of this mess maker. some in my hands. It's great to give it some texture. I don't know if you guys have seen these. I call, it a, I call it a curl sock. Apparently that's not what it's called, but I like to call it a curl sock. So um, yeah, slips on the end of the blow dryer. Clip it over the top. Instant diffuser. So just drawing the, the mess maker in with our little curl sock. Just to give it a little bit more of a textured finish. And might just This is 
just the volume. Oh, cool. It's called height riser. But what I like to do is magic question. Yep. Just scrunch it through, but then while I'm diffusing, it just blows out that little bit of residual that's left there. Cool. So I went from smooth, just some mess maker, a little bit of height riser, We've got some volume in there, get it up off the scalp. You can see now through the side here, you get that nice strong disconnection, which makes it look a little bit bold. I've just got the, the shape in the front and it's soft and more beachy. So yeah, just from smooth to, to textured, really, really simple. It is, it is a messy look. I, would, I think it's organized mess. There's a difference between mess and then organized mess. This is definitely organized mess. You can see in there works really nicely with that existing colour that's in there as well. What do you think? Love it. Yeah, you like I love it? it? Yep. So awesome. Cool. Thanks. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs>